Welcome to That's Good Broncos, a podcast hosted by me, Brandon Perna, and also Will, I think I'm hot shit because I got a 22,000 viewed video on YouTube now. I still don't, I still don't know how that happened. Uh, and it's called The Algorithm, Will. Yeah. The performance of my newest video really is making me wonder even more how that how that last video popped off but i'm not complaining it's a good video most important thank you two it's a topic subject that people will click on um 2k madden 2k or wait no madden 23 and nfl 2k 23 little comparison yeah Uh, this other one you're i think the newest one you did the backyard uh, football is actually even funnier, but I'm not sure that's a game as many people are interested in watching a video about. That's true. Well, that's, I, that's the battle. Not the expert did some backyard sports videos, and they all got like you know 10 trillion views. So I figured I'd try my hand. Um, yeah, but give it a few months, and maybe I'll be there. Yeah. No, I mean, like, that video just needs to sit on YouTube for a little bit, and then, yeah. you know, it might pop off. Um, Hopefully. I, I I took your advice, and I changed the title and the thumbnail, so. We'll see what happens. And I also saw that uh, Coach Jason Brown from Last Chance U, because that's the guy whose audio I sampled. Oh, okay. Uh, he liked the tweet. Someone tagged him in it. Oh, nice. <laughs> I got to see it. Hell yeah. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean if just to you know plug my own channel here, but um if you want to see what we're talking about, the channel is called Will Sucks at Games. And the newest video is called I Broke Peyton Manning's Record in Backyard Football. And that's not clickbait. I did break the record by one touchdown. Yep. It's impressive. Will had to play an entire season of backyard football. Easily just, the hardest part of the video. <laughs> which really just seems like a punishment watch, watching through the, the video. Kind of, um, yeah, yeah. It's not a dynamic game. No. So, <laughs> uh, today, we, we've got a lot to talk about with Broncos news. And do subscribe to Will's gaming channel because... Please. Just please. please. God. Come on. I've if you bought my coffee, you can subscribe to Will's channel for free, benchwarmerbrew.com. And today's episode brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Just use code DNVR when you sign up at DraftKings. Shitty news coming out of Broncos training camp. A uh, couple ACL injuries in the same day. Tim Patrick, yep. fan favorite, uh, team leader. Like, just, just, it's hard to, I think... Put a value on how important Tim Patrick is to the team, to the offense, and how excited Broncos fans were for him this season. We'll talk about that injury. Who else got hurt, Will? Running back Demarie Crockett. Demarie Crockett. See, I set you up for that because I don't know how to say his first name. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think he got a couple carries last year. Yeah, he was. He's he's definitely been. Hanging he's, around, and he's one of those players yeah. I think coaches have been like optimistic about. Mm-hmm. Um, they like him, so he might have been fighting for like that third wide re- or a uh, running back spot. Um, they have Mike Boone still, so he goes down with an ACL injury. We'll talk more about that and any other nuggets out of Broncos training camp. Uh, a lot of people are like, who's going to be the backup quarterback? Brett Rippon's been looking pretty good. Uh, so I don't know. Josh Johnson, Brett Rippon. Maybe they keep two. Maybe it's just Rippon's time to shine as an official backup. I don't know, Will. It's time to grip it and rip it. Grip it and fucking rip it. Um. Oh, yeah. Tell me about this race car, dude. Yeah. So the Broncos... Well, I guess the Walton Penner group added Formula One uh, driver, Lewis Hamilton, mm-hmm. to their ownership group. He is, uh, he's an Englishman, I believe. Uh, I know Ooh. this because I've woken knighted? up. What's up? Has he, has he been knighted? I think he should be. 
I He's saw like somebody referred to him as Sir Lewis Hamilton. Oh, maybe then. Maybe I should. Well, I, if that's the case, then I need to address him as such. I think it's a crime if I don't. Oh, yeah. He's definitely knighted. Oh, Fuck sweet. yeah. We got, a, we got a knight as our right. ownership group now. Yes. We, yeah. We're, we are the knights of the round table. Uh, Lewis Hamilton. I woke up the last couple of Sundays and watched Formula One, or at least parts of Formula One. You have? Yeah, just because I had friends who watch okay. it and I wanted to hang out with my friends. I really don't. I, I'd i be lying if I said I knew it was going on or that I was like into it or knew the ins and outs of the sport. I literally don't know a single person who watches Formula One. See, I know like quite a few people. Um, it's No, it's actually really my uncle probably steam. does. The problem, like I said, is that you have to wake up, especially on the West Coast, the the ass crack of dawn, you know, just to watch these things. They're not in prime time. But they are on ESPN or ABC, so. Um, but I wanted to read, and like I said, I watched it with my friends. And my friend, I texted him when I found out that Lewis Hamilton was joining the ownership group. And I wanted like a little like brief synopsis on Lewis Hamilton. Sure. who he was, what, what he's all about. Um, and my friend texted me, he's a known winner and a great guy. A uh, little bit of a pussy, but a great guy. <laughs> so he's a great guy. I, I took What I took away from that is that he's a winner and he's a great guy. And that's it. And he, You're just going to scratch that final little tag from the, the record. Yeah. Yeah, he might have been a pussy – before he joined the Broncos, but now he's not. Now he's sure. totally not. And also, he's a knight, so you shouldn't say yeah. that about a knight. Yeah, because he'll cut your you'll cut your head off. Yeah, and he'd be right to do it. You don't insult a knight like that. Welcome to the round table. I am a knight. They should have like a round table for ownership. Oh hell yeah! You have like Condoleezza. Well, in one hand. It's a round table when Sir Lewis Hamilton's there. But on the other hand, it's the war room because Condoleezza Rice is there. Yeah. Think about that. The Broncos ownership group definitely, not only is it the richest in the NFL, it yeah. it a 100% leads the league in the amount of people it's had killed. Diverse. Powerful. Yeah. War I'm not premise. talking about Condoleezza Rice. I'm talking about George Lucas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. People don't want to bring that up. He's not part of the group, but he married into it. So, but he's had a lot of people killed. George Lucas, first. yeah, George Lucas was. Um, he had a big hand in the Iraq War. He executed Order sixty six over there. Ooh, I don't um, even know what that is. Yeah, a little Star Wars reference. Um, but yeah, this is. I don't know. Does this mean anything to you? I don't think so. I think it makes it cooler. Like it makes it cooler. For sure. Like we were we were on a good streak of just like lame additions to the ownership group, very like corporate Tepid. adding a knight and a race car driver, kind of badass. Yeah. Somebody said he's like the John Elway of race car drivers. I don't know if that comparison is accurate, but I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, it sounds like I you know, and like I said, if I'm wrong, please yell at me in the comments. But I think he's kind of the the greatest of all time, right? In F one, and maybe I don't know. The only one I know historically is like Senna and um, you know James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. Then they had a great rivalry and stuff. Uh, oh I yeah, is that from the movie? Uh, movie? <laughs> yeah, from the movie. <laughs> the movie is really good. I think yeah. that's like my biggest exposure to the sport. Um, but yeah, it, it's cool. They they needed like this does take some of the heat off from uh, the whole Condoleezza Rice thing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hamilton has won a joint players. record seven World Drivers Championship titles and holds the record pole positions and podium finishes. So, yeah. Just a win. He's just a winner. Bring in winner. Does he know anything about football? I'm not sure. Um, does it matter? Probably not. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, God damn it. I forgot to switch my internet, which means it's probably going to affect the quality of my face. My apologies. Yeah. 
Anyway, yeah. as long as right. I look good. Okay. Tomorrow, Hall of Fame game. It's our first yeah. taste of NFL football since the Super Bowl. And it's like the Hall of Fame game next to the Pro Bowl is the worst game of the year mm -hmm. because teams are forced to play an extra preseason game to play in that game, right? Do they still make that count? Like, yeah, I think um, it's I think like every play team plays extra, three, yeah. but if you play the Hall of Fame game, you got to play four, right? Oh, thank God there's only three. I forgot about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. See, I love that there's only three, but I hate, I really hate that now there's an extra week in between the preseason and the regular season. That oh. really, that really screwed me up last year. And I think it's good for the teams and the players. Um, but as a fan, as someone who wants uninterrupted football on Sundays throughout, you know, you know, from August to February, I'm pissed off. I'm angry. I want to write a letter. Yeah, my big beef with the preseason in terms of games is like all the Broncos games are always on Saturdays. Uh, it's like the <laughs> yeah. one day I want to go out and like do shit with my family <laughs> and that we have like That's the so best fast. Uh, opportunity to do that. It's like put them on a Thursday night or a, I don't know, even Sunday night. I don't like the Saturday game schedule. That annoys me. But yeah. the Hall of Fame game, what's the Jags and the Raiders? It's the Jaguars and the Las Vegas Raiders. So it's our first look at Doug Peterson with mm. the Jags. It's also our first look at uh, the one and only Josh McDaniels with the Raiders. That's right. He's, the man. He's a great coach. Saw Kyle Slaughter, too. Can probably get a lot of reps. Very good point. Trevor Lawrence will not play. CJ Beathard will also not play. So it's going to be Jake Luton and Slaughterhouse, Kyle Slaughter, who uh, we were, I was writing about it in the USFL video that we'll have coming out. There's a ton of USFL players that are on. 30 now. Damn. Yeah, they're, they're in NFL training camps and deservedly so. I mean, Slaughter's, you know, Slaughter's more of an NFL player than he is a USFL player. Yeah, he's – but. He's been bounced he's around. He's got like a legitimate shot now. And I think he, you know, given all the reps that he got over in the USFL, this could be his chance to like really cement himself as a backup or maybe a starter. Who knows? Like Trevor, Trevor Lawrence wasn't that good. Yeah. Maybe well, Kyle Slaughter leads the Jags to the playoffs this year. Ooh, possibility. He too, uh, like if he plays in this game, uh, well, he is going to play, but like, out of everybody playing in the Hall of Fame game, there are a couple USFL players on the Raiders. But in yeah. terms of quarterbacks, he is the most in-game shape of any QB because his mm -hmm. season just ended in June, like mid to late June. Yeah. So, like, he should have an advantage just based on, like, I was just doing live football reps uh, at the highest level. So I'll be curious to see what he looks like. Um, the, the Doug Peterson angle really, yep. you know, Vic Fangio peaked, uh, in the hall of fame game, which is horrible for Broncos fans Yeah, but, with, with the kidney stones. Yeah. He went into that game passing kidney stones and I was like, fuck, this is the guy. This is the guy we want leading our team. Yeah. He's coaching through kidney stones in a meaningless game. What kind of message does that send to the team? Your coach is fucking hard as nails. He's going to be in the shit with you. Turns out he was just old and stubborn and couldn't relate to young players, as we learned on this podcast. And that was the peak level of Fangio excitement. That, I mean, you can like the the contradictions with Fangio are pretty crazy. Like, you know, he's a guy who wouldn't let the players listen to music while they practiced, but he also dressed in sweatpants every day. <laughs> yeah. like, you gotta, you know, you gotta pick one lane there. He's like, we will not have music. Instead, good fellas will be playing in the background the yeah. whole time. Also, I just rolled out of bed. <laughs> 
No yeah. more uh, protein shakes. Everybody will be eating my meatballs after practice. Everybody gather around and taste my balls. I've got the best balls. <laughs> I've got the best balls in the NFL. I'm Vic Fangio Donald. I feel like we should have gotten a good hack it mic'd up by now. Oh, right? yeah. Where the fuck's that? We need one of those. Um, because we got, I, I, cause I was watching like the little preview for Dan Campbell on Hard Knocks. Right, right. there, the Lions posted on Twitter. And that looks like it's going to be really good. Thank God, because the Cowboys one was like, was like melatonin. Yeah, <laughs> that one sucked. <laughs> so looking forward to that. That's you know. Between between the rehearsal and Hard Knocks, HBO is going to have a good month. Um, yeah, the little snip snippet of Dan Campbell that's getting me getting me a little excited for football, a little excited yeah. for the Lions. Uh, hope the Lions do well with their their current roster of, I think, just like a lot of underdogs. You know what I mean? I think like Jared seen- Goff plays like a you know top. 15 quarterback the lions can win you know eight or nine games that'll be a nice story this season yeah i mean they've had two pretty good drafts in a row i think Mm -hmm. Um, i still can't believe like i was thinking about it yesterday it's still so hard for me to believe that the jags took trevon walker and aiden hutchinson fell to two to the lions yeah (laughs) i I don't hey man trenches they're building in the trenches, and they got the guy many thought was the sure. best player in the draft. Yeah, Smart. I mean, don't overthink got, it. Yeah, you have to trust Trent Balky with these things. Fucking he's got a track dude. record of greatness. Mm-hmm. He knows what he's doing. Whatever. I saw. I saw Aiden Hutchinson doing some drills after practice. Yeah, and he was just running under a thing. Just like, <laughs> why are why are people posting this? Yeah, it sounds like a... Look at him run under that thing. Oh, my God. This guy wants it. No this one does guy. more like uh, post-practice drills than white defensive ends. Yeah. It's like him and J.J. Watt, they basically give themselves an extra practice after practice. Yeah, it's Maybe the that's only why way they get that... injured all the time. Yeah, that's how the motor stays so high. Will. I guess so. Yeah, got to keep that motor running. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk about Tim Patrick. Uh Right yeah. after me doing DraftKings. Oops, where's my little thingy? There it is. Boom! DraftKings Sportsbook. Get in on the hottest sports action for your shot at cold, hard cash with DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, bet on your favorite sports all summer long and gear up for football season. Right now, new customers can get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Wow, that's a lot of dough. Just make your first bet up to $1,000, and if it doesn't hit, you'll get another shot at a big win. Plus, with same-game parlays, spreads, money lines, over-unders, props, doobly doublies. I made one of those up. Uh, your betting options feel endless. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, like a condom. Made up part of that, too. Deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Just download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code DNVR. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. Let's go DNVR. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Got to be 21 or older. Colorado only. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit. Risk-free bet paid out in the form of non-withdrawable free bet token. Max 1,000 restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. All right. <clears throat> Yesterday was a shitty day for Broncos country. Um, They're practicing. We talked about this, I think, last week on how the only news we're going to hear is bad news. Uh, yeah. And Tim Patrick went up for a pass, came down, landed, was fine, tried to jog away, and then winced in pain. They carted him off the field, said it looked bad. 
We had a little window there where we were hoping, you know, maybe it's something that he can come back from. Turns out it's a torn ACL. Uh, running back, how do you say his name again? Demarie Crockett. Demarie. Demarie? I think it's Demarie. Demarie, Demarie Crockett. I might have said it the other way to start, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Demarie. There's too many vowels in there for me. And if <laughs> yeah. anybody knows my brain, mm, not going to do it right. So both guys go down, torn ACL. Um, now I put a short up about Tim Patrick kind of talking about it yesterday on that's good sports, but a couple things here. And I saw Mario sort of reiterate this on, on Twitter as well, but it's just like, you're not going to replace Tim Patrick and no. you can get maybe a couple guys who, you know, you replace his production totals throughout the season, but this is a dude that I think, Everybody in the locker room respected a guy who I thought was going to be important for Russell Wilson's sort of evolution in a new offense, a new setting where you have a smart veteran receiver who is going to be sort of, I thought Patrick was going to become like Russell Wilson's security blanket this season. Like Cortland Sutton, to me, seemed like the guy who's going to get a lot of the deep ball shots, the home run shots from mm-hmm. Russell Wilson. And even though Tim Patrick's, you know, he's built similar, uh, similarly to Cortland Sutton, big, like six foot four receiver, uh, could be that guy. But I thought like third down, Russ needs a play, was going to go to Tim Patrick. Also, Tim Patrick produced not like astronomical numbers, but he was like the reliable production guy yeah. through just a gauntlet of different QBs coming through the system. And I was like, Mm. I can't wait to see what he's going to look like with Russell Wilson throwing him the pass because the last couple seasons, what is it? What's his, let me bring up his stats again. I got his stats right here. Um, The last two seasons combined 104 receptions, 1,476 yards, 11 touchdowns. Yeah, so just a little over 50 catches each of the last two seasons. Six touchdowns, five touchdowns, 740, 734 yards. That's extremely consistent with, again, dicey quarterback play. I was like, you know, Patrick could be, I don't know, a 900-yard receiver with like nine or ten touchdowns. Just the kind of guy that, you know, unless he's – destroying the Cowboys, not going to get a lot of national sort of attention, but Broncos fans are just going to be even more in love with him because also he had to work his ass off just to get the roster spot. Everybody kind of knows that about Patrick, like wasn't guaranteed to make the team, uh, but just became like the guy they're like coaches had to keep on the roster. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, he got paid last year. That's the silver lining for Tim Patrick. He put up just enough, you know, tape and good numbers to get the contract. Uh, Crockett, that's not the story. Like, he hasn't had that payday yet. So, like, his ACL injury is a lot more troublesome in terms of, like, him being able to put himself in a position to set himself up for the rest of his life. Um, Yeah. No, it, it is, and hopefully, you know, Crockett. We it's so hard to say, and it's especially devastating for a running back who's, you know, their lifespan in the NFL already is just short. Not, yeah, it's just not very long, and when you're already on the bubble, like, you know, they're just going to cycle through running backs every single year, and I yeah, I hope he didn't miss his window, but um, you know, we'll see, we'll see if he gets a chance next year, and like, let's just say this about Tim Patrick too. It's like, you know, he's going to play with Russell Wilson eventually. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to catch passes from Russell Wilson next year. It sucks that he's not going to be around this year. He's been the constant, I think for a few years now in that lineup. I know he was injured in 2019, but 2020 and 2021, when it felt like receivers were dropping like flies, like Sutton was down, Judy was down, Hamler, felt like Tim Patrick was always there. So to lose him just feels like, you know, losing your security blanket um, to some extent. But this is where, you know, the depth comes into play. And you've got Judy, who's healthy. You got Sutton, who's a year 
well, two years now removed from tearing his ACL and other, you know, ligaments in his knee. Um, yeah, Hamler coming back. Sounds like he, you know, he's off the pup list. Sounds like he's yeah. recovering pretty nicely. Um, again, yeah, like, came, I think he came off early. You know what I mean? They yeah. didn't know when he would come off the list. The fact that he's off it now, I think, is a, a positive sign. And none of these guys, like these guys can be really good, but they're not Tim Patrick. And I don't mean they can't be as productive as Tim Patrick. They're just not – they don't fit in the role that Tim Patrick was going to play. And no, neither he's does – like, if I he was gonna be like Ed McCaffrey in yeah, the Broncos offense. That's a very good comparison. Um, and Montreal, Washington, the rookie that they got, um, I forget where he went to college, but it was a small school. Um, apparently he's been really good in training camp. Again, he is more he's closer to, to Hamler than he is yeah. to Tim Patrick. Um, but I saw that touchdown catch he had, and then he backflipped uh right next to the end zone. Maybe don't do that while all your receivers are getting hurt. Um, but I'm excited to see him. But you know who's got a great – like this opens the door in terms of silver linings. Seth Williams, who they drafted yeah. in the seventh round last year. He's uh, he's 6'3". So that, you know, that job's kind of – Physically, for- he's the guy you look to and say he can come in and possibly – yeah, he fits the, Do the same role as Tim Patrick. Exactly. Um, and then you got Tyree Cleveland, who was a seventh rounder a couple years ago. Yeah. He's never really like, I think he's caught a few passes, but obviously he's never carved himself, uh, you know, a, a niche in the offense. But those, those guys, like, that's why you take seventh round flyers, hoping that eventually one of those guys is going to either step in or provide you with um, the necessary depth. And, you know, you can complain about taking Judy and Hamler back to back to start the 2020 draft, but that depth has come in handy and that yeah, depth is they, always going to be tested. They've needed it. They've needed it every single season so far. You can basically count on it. Like it's, yeah. it's almost, it's sad because it's like, Vaughn Miller and Bradley Chubb. It's like we thought all these guys were going to be together and playing at the same yeah. time. And it turns out, you know, it's like we can only have one or the other. Can never have it at full strength. Yeah. The and that's the thing. Wide receiver was probably the deepest position on the team. Yeah. The running back depth also is pretty strong because you're one A and one B, you know, it's Williams and Gordon, and you still have also Mike Boone there. Mm-hmm. Um, but another thing I think in terms of the silver lining for a player getting more opportunities with Tim Patrick going down is possibly like Greg Dulcich. So yeah, you draft this guy, I think Broncos fans believe he's going to play more than he might. I don't know. It's just like, it's hard to say. It's like, Oh, I think the coaches love Dulcich. Um, but like the knock on him, not a great blocking tight end. But if you need another big target that you can split out, it's like yeah. him or Albert O. Like have your choice there. Uh, maybe they're in the lineup a little bit more than they would have been because Patrick goes down. That's that's a really, really good point. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like the thing about having – so you got three tight ends in that group that do different things. Like Albert O, a little bit of both. Salbert – primarily a blocker but can catch a few passes when he's open and then Dulcich like he can he can just split out and probably play wide receiver yeah 100 so he'll, he'll take you know like you said he'll take a few of Tim Patrick's reps and that you know this is probably and I wrote it in the rundown but this is what they're gonna do and they're they're probably not gonna go out and sign Odell Beckham Will Fuller I saw people tossing around Alan Hearns um Emmanuel Sanders like probably not going to happen it'd be great we all we all miss him but you know it's probably not going to happen um I saw Albright say like Dante Moncrief I don't think Dante Moncrief go I don't think there's a move that could get me less excited than signing Dante Moncrief yeah uh, in in the year 2022 um but I don't expect them to to go out and I think Odell's going to go to like the Cowboys 
that makes sense. Ooh, interesting. And Sanders, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think he's probably uh, not washed, but obviously. No, his, his Emmanuel Sanders, I mean, he produced for Buffalo last year, but, you know, he is 35. Yeah. Um, four touchdowns, 42 receptions for the Bills. But that's like a that's a really good offense to be in. You're going to get some, you're going to get looks there. He could, he could come in and make some catches for you. Yeah. But OBJ thought, doesn't make actually. any sense unless you're just assuming you're going to need the extra help once the playoffs start, because he's not going to be back until the end of the season at the earliest. Is that right? Um, cause he, yeah. Cause he got hurt in the middle of the Super Bowl. Yeah, he tore his ACL in the Super Bowl. Like, well, it's been it's you know the Super Bowl wasn't last week. It was like six months ago. I, I don't know. I guess it takes longer. ACLs are usually year long recovery times. Nine months. Yeah, I heard nine months. My friend tore his ACL. It's gonna be nine months. Yeah, but yeah, you- not Odell Beckham. So you can play kickball. Again. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we need to rush him back for the spring season. Um, but yeah, I think the Cam Akers thing has just totally like warped our perception of what a yeah. recovery should be. Like, I think even even played yeah. last year. No, it's I mean Achilles, ACLs, or different injuries. It's good like for him, but. you're just waiting. You're waiting for your body to accept that new ACL and build the the strength around it. And one thing I wanted to talk about today too is. Uh, well, there's a lot of doctors out there on Twitter, too, talking about why ACL injuries are happening. Uh, they just fucking happen. Yeah. Like, you're playing a physical sport. You're putting a ton of torque on your knee. And I think unless, like, you're getting MRIs every week to judge, like, the health of all of your ligaments, yeah, they're going to tear sometimes. I don't think it's a strength and conditioning issue. No. Um. It's just, it's unfortunate. It just, it's going to happen. You're wearing cleats. They're planting into the ground. You turn on them. Sometimes your knee, the bottom of your legs goes one way. The top of your leg goes the other and it tears that shit off. Uh, I mean, we're lucky that, happen. like, we're lucky how, um, I guess, like how medicine is, and you know, and, and technology has progressed in the last 20 years because this was it wasn't like a career ending injury, but it ended your prime basically in yep. almost all cases. Uh, Terrell Davis being the most common example uh, of that happening. Yep. And now it's just like, you know, you're gone for a season and you'll be yeah. back and you might be stronger or you might not, but um it's certainly not – no one's, like, writing the career obituary for Tim Patrick right now. Yeah, some guys are probably playing on ACLs that are not at optimal health. Yeah. And they're, like, knees always hurting or, or some shit. And then they tear it, and they get a new one put in, and their knee feels better. Yeah, I mean – Like Adrian Peterson coming back and rushing for 2,000 yards. after. Yeah, check out the 2012 video, please. Yes. Yeah. We did it before KTO. Everybody knows that. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Somebody's like, why are you copying KTO? I'm like, Fuck. Yeah, do you think we just fucking uh, saw his video and then in like three days, we're like, you know, we're going to write. out a 26-minute yeah, video. Yeah, write, the- <laughs> write, shoot, and edit a 26-minute yeah. video. And we're not like, oh, you know, this will be a bad look if we just copy him. Oh, they put up a hack it mic'd up video yesterday. Oh, Will. I guess I missed that. Yeah, I tweeted to them. Now I look stupid. Yeah, you do. God, I'm so stupid. That's what so you get for tweeting up. during the middle of the podcast, which God, I've done before. I'm an idiot. All right, well, I'm going to watch that afterwards, but it'd be. I do. I yearn for hard knocks with the Broncos one day. 
feels like when Arch Manning is their quarterback. I agree. When Arch Manning, yeah, leaves the Giants to come to the Broncos. Exactly. Exactly. Because uh, I think Russell Wilson were getting ten solid years, and then mm-hmm. Arch Manning, instead of staying in New York, declines. Or after his fifth year, it's like, I'm done with this shit town of football. I'm going to Denver. Yeah, so Arch has Arch still has his senior year in high school. Damn. Which is crazy. And I don't know if – he does, it doesn't seem like a Manning thing to um, – some of these high school kids, like they'll graduate halfway through their senior year and then go join their college football team. Oh, uh, like start practicing in the spring or something. Yeah. Shit. Which feels like just like over enjoy your, enjoy your senior year of high school. Yeah. Please, for the love of God. Like you're only going to be in college for three years, too. So um, just like, you know, try to be a person for a while and not a football player. But he's got one year of high school, three years, maybe four of college, probably three. And then, so that'll be, you know, four years from now, he'll be drafted number one overall. Yeah. So the time frame works perfect. Five years, at least five years with the team that drafts him. Yep. And then it comes to know, the Broncos because the Broncos, Broncos cannot draft their own quarterbacks. Nope. Doesn't work. I like actually, that. at this point, I don't want him to. I just want no. him to keep getting the guys after somebody else drafts him. LA, Manning, Russ, Arch. And then uh, probably like Tom Brady's kid or one of Philip Rivers' kids or something. Tom Brady's kid doesn't strike me as someone that's going to be good at football. Yeah, because he has no athletic genes being passed down. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, yeah, all these kids are getting elite genes. And then, you know, without plastic surgery and, you know, um, mutating your body with the TB12 method, Tom Brady's just an average guy. Yeah. That's With. why some people love him. That's why I hate him. And they, and happy birthday, by the way. No, fuck Brady. that. It is not Tom Brady's birthday. It's Young Way Koo's birthday today. That's the only birthday I recognize on August 3rd. Uh, yeah, Brady. So Brady is turning 45 today. People don't know this, but Young Way Koo is actually 57 years old. <laughs> just doesn't look like it. No, he's just got a baby face. Yeah, he looks great. Um, oh yeah, he might play another ten years. Uh, here's here's one for you, okay? okay. Um, in terms of bringing in somebody to replace Tim Patrick's production at some point, uh huh. I've seen this multiple times on Twitter from Broncos fans, and they are suggesting <laughs> Antonio Brown. Ah, okay. Yeah, probably not. That's probably a no for me. They call a yeah, pass. Yeah, hundred percent no from me as well. I don't think he wants to step away from his rap career at this no. point. It's going too well. Yeah, it's going why, way too well. Why would he come back and play football? Like, yes, um, Antonio Brown. He would be a great addition to the Broncos' offense for. Six and a half weeks. That's the thing. Until he's, you know, takes his, <clears throat> you know, uh, jersey, helmet, pants off. Yeah. You got to sign him in December if you're going to do it. He'd probably mount thunder and then ride out of the stadium. Yeah. Straight up to an Uber and then drive away. Or you you wait for him to have some sort of like public uh, meltdown or, or blowout mm-hmm. once he's gotten it out of his system. Oh, and then weird. like it resets. You're like, oh good, yeah. we got we got five months because he just he just threw furniture off the Empire State Building. So uh we good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, that's uh the eighteen Why it's like is Antonio Brown taking that you have to... a couch to the Empire State Building. Yeah, he carried a couch to the very tip of the Empire State Building just to throw it off. Yeah, and he so. narrowly missed, uh, you know, a field trip of of school children <laughs> on the way down. <laughs> he almost flattened eighteen toddlers with that couch. 
Antonio Brown goes to daycare and steals all the toddlers' sleeping cots for some reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't want Antonio Brown necessarily. No. I'm trying to think if there are any, like, Seattle receivers that – Oh, someone – you know, it was actually a good um, idea that I saw someone had, and I I wish I could credit them, but uh, if Jawan Winfrey gets cut from the Packers – Oh, he in Denver, and he played with Hackett in Green Bay, and there you go. You know, caught a few passes last year, so I, boom, I think boom. that that would make a lot of sense for depth. And you know, he's got a little bit of experience too, so wouldn't mind that at all. By the way, he's going to be out of a job the way Romeo Dubs is playing in Green Bay. Oof. God, Fortune, Eric Stokes at practice. God, he's good. If only someone could have predicted this. Only Will Keys was talking about him all year long on the podcast. Yep. Oh, well. Maybe just listen to what I say this college football season, uh, everybody. You know what I would do if I were the Broncos? I would call up Josh McDaniels Mm -hmm. and see if you were willing to trade Hunter Renfro for – uh, our sixth string tight end, Rodney Williams. Yeah. Um, I mean, based on his trade history, we'd probably have to, th- sadly, we'd probably have to throw in like a fifth rounder, Josh Johnson, and then, you know, conditional seventh. Josh Johnson, you can have Rodney Williams and. Jalen Virgil. Okay. But they also have to give us a sixth in return. So Renfro and a sixth, and then it's fair. We should put that in the Madden Madden trade machine. See if it goes through. They need to take into account, if I I was working for EA Sports, um, I would take into account like the McDaniels factor when you're trading in franchise mode. And yeah, like, there are like certain coaches, GMs that you can fleece, and then yes. certain ones that, like George Payton, you're never going to get a good trade from him. McDaniel's, you could trade like Derek Carr for like, you know, two hundred thousand cash and your, you know, backup long snapper. <laughs> yeah, and if like the Seahawks have a really really good quarterback, they'll get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, these are, you know, this is why I should be working for them. Yeah. Come on, guys. These are free ideas. Ooh, this just came out. Before the ruling on the six game suspension for Watson, the NFL offered his camp the following deal 12 game suspension Ooh. and a near $10 million fine. The $10 million fine is the salary amount Watson made last year. That would essentially mean a nearly two-year suspension. Watson turned it down. So Yeah, the, the whole, like, I get that he didn't play last year. Yeah, that's um, not part of the punishment, though. But also, he didn't – he wasn't planning on playing last year for the yeah. Texans. So that was kind of his doing. I mean, this is all he's doing. <laughs> this is like this, he's like, responsible <laughs> for all of it. Um, I'm not going to say that, like, you know, you probably didn't want to play for the Texans regardless of his personal life. Yeah. Um, but, no, he probably could have played last year. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, I think my opinion is that he probably wasn't punished enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The NFL will appeal probably and or just uh, give him – like if I'm the NFL, he turns that down. I'd be like, all right, fuck you. Year suspension, $20 million fine. Yeah. Bring it. Bring it. We spent close to $25 million on deflate gate. You Mm -hmm. don't think we'll we'll fight you on this? (laughs) Fucking scumbag. And like we said – yeah, I like uh, – you expanded on this idea, but, yeah, the the Browns have to start Josh Rosen for mm-hmm. the entirety of the suspension. No Jacoby Brissett. You don't get a mid-tier quarterback. 
It's not how it works. Um, and then once that happens, Rosen goes over to the Dolphins, back to the Dolphins. And then he has to – because people thought their punishment wasn't, you know, heavy enough too. Oh, for the – yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got to play for the Dolphins. So two, two is out. Rosen in. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how that's fair to Tua. But <laughs> Sorry, Tua. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, because the punishment is if your organization does something bad, you get Josh Rosen. That's the new the new deal. Yeah. I, I think we should punish the teams that uh, – tried to trade for Watson too. I yeah, should Falcons get, like, get Rosen. Yeah, well they already had him, so maybe we can cross and both if, lists. If the Saints make the playoffs, they gotta start Josh Rosen. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Solved the world's problems. <laughs> Josh Rosen's like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> why did I why do I deserve this? You were a little too smug and then weren't great at football. Yeah. You That's know when you, you, you know when you were a little too smug when you were 18 years old. Well, that's gonna follow you around for the le- the rest for of your life, pal. Ever, we will never forgive you for that. Nope. Trying to pro- portray confidence. <laughs> Remember when you were cocky when you were the best quarterback in the nation for the for that one year? Yeah. Well, big mistake. Good thing the Cardinals drafted you, idiot. <laughs> I, his, I, don't know, I still don't understand his career, but maybe he's just not good. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think he's that good. Yeah, I don't think he's as bad as it's looked, but you know, it happens. I also just want I want Rosen on the Panthers too. Mayfield, Darnold, and Rosen. Yes. Perfect quarterback room. Yes. It's gotta Please. happen. And Saquon Barkley too. I want him in there. Yeah. Yeah, Saquon Barkley and Christian McCaffrey. You might get one actual season out of a running back. Boom. All right, Will, I think we did a good podcast. Yeah. That's all right. That's okay. Yeah. So make sure you check out Will's YouTube channel, Will Sucks at Games. Uh, And John Elway played his entire career without an ACL. Good night and good luck.